Hello and welcome to Coffee Zen. Today we will be talking about Web3. That has been lately in the news and all and with all everything that's going on in the world, Web3 has become a very important topic in the IT industry and everything surrounding technology. So Web3 is obviously the third iteration of web technologies. Um, I guess in today's episode we will start where it all started with the wonderful internet, Web1. So after World War or during World War II, the internet started. The internet was um, was designed by the US military to have more effective communication over longer distances. And thus it became the thing everyone is using today. You're probably using the internet to listen to this podcast, either it being downloaded or on the YouTube channel. And just a reminder, please subscribe. Uh, I see a lot of you guys that are are viewing the videos are not subscribed. Uh, We put out a new video, a new episode of this podcast every week. So yeah, I've got uh, guests lined up for the next episode, um, the next two episodes. So yeah, please hit the subscribe buttons um, and uh, yeah, it's free, helps me out a lot. Uh, so yeah, enjoy. So web, web, the internet started with World, well, at the end of World War II. And after that came the first iteration of web technologies, namely Web 1. That is when Google, Yahoo, MySpace, well, not MySpace, but most of the search engines and web pages we know today became available in the first iteration of the Internet, Web 1. Web 1 was a basic collection of web pages, and you, you physically had to type in www.tubery.com or .co.za for my South African listeners who's listening to this podcast. Um, I think I just gave away my age there uh, with with that statement. Um, but yes, basically it was only static web pages where you could do certain things um, on the web page, maybe read information or it was a way to spread information over the internet. Then came Google and said, "No, we need a some we need somehow to index all these pages to make it easily accessible for everyone involved." Thus, Web two was born. Um, Web two gives you access to all the wonderful things on the internet you use today, like um, FTP sites if you want to download something or send someone something to someone via email, via the SMTP protocol, simple mail transfer protocol, and thus protocols was born. Protocols, so the internet started with only having access to port 80 or protocol HTTP, which is basically a way to send documents back and forth. Now, obviously, since then, there was a lot more uh, bigger need for more in- interesting or a bigger need for more web technologies. Thus, Facebook, my, well, first MySpace, then Facebook, YouTube. Um, I can continue. All the web technologies and web apps you use today um, was the second iteration of web. Uh, so the app actually being something that you can physically use and physically do. Um, again, I'm oversimplifying this for the purposes of it making sense to our listeners that don't necessarily have the technical background um, some of you might have um, yes web and after web 2 um, as a very someone that obviously um, uses web web 2 or uses the second iteration of web a lot today um, yeah it's wonderful you know you can access pretty much anything from everywhere google provides an indexed version of web one to everyone um obviously that's been phased out a lot of the new websites now actually physically it's a web application not just a static website with html and i can go into the to the to the reasoning behind um the different web technologies in terms of programming languages like php javascript but that's not the entire focus of this episode so after Web2 uh, was born, 
something else started to develop. Web3. What is Web3? Web3 is the wonderful buzzword you hear everywhere today, blockchain. Or as someone or as people might have heard, uh, Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. Now, the latest trend is NFTs. Um, now, I'm specifically talking about about this this whole Web3 thing because of the, the crisis uh, in uh, Eastern Europe um, where, you know, uh, not to get too political because the YouTube algorithm does not like this at all. So I guess I'll just... I'll just leave it at that. I think everyone listening to this podcast is informed enough to know what I'm talking about. Um, there is this big movement for people to sign up to download software um, to to do to help or assist um, the governments in taking down one another's IT infrastructure. Again, please don't do that because you're you're essentially breaking the law by downloading that software because. It will use your computer as a node in a, in a massive network to denial of service attack these Web2 two, Web two interfaces. Now, this ties into Web3 because as a reward for using your, your computer, you will be awarded a certain amount of cryptocurrency that depends on the work you're doing. But again, I would advise you strongly to stay away from that software that has been distributed. I'm not even going to mention the name because... I don't want you to go through the website and then <clears throat> inadvertently get uh, malicious code on your on your on your computer. So, just a, a warning out there. But this specific um, episode or this specific version of the uh, episode of the podcast, I want to focus on what Web three is. And put plainly, Web three is still a very infant phase. It has started to become very popular with the invention of NFTs or non-fungible tokens. Um, Yacht Club and Board Apes is a big one. Um, and then obviously the, the whole blockchain cryptocurrency in general. So let's talk about what is cryptocurrency. The blockchain is basically a system that uh, records information uh, that makes it difficult for a third party to change that information. So basically to hack or to cheat the system. Now, the block block chain is essentially a, a old school ledger that keeps record of all the transactions happening um, and it uses very strong uh, cryptography uh, algorithms or uh, locking mechanisms to ensure that that ledger is always reliable and very much un, not unhackable but very much not you, you're not able to forge um, signatures or stuff in this le ledger. Uh, so each block in the chain contains a number of transactions uh, and every time a new transaction occurs in this chain of blocks um, a record uh, a record of that transaction is being added uh, to the specific ledger uh, so it's it's a decentralized database managed managed by multiple participants inside the 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 blockchain it's called a DLT or a digital ledger technology and Put plainly, digital uh, and all this record keeping um, needs processing power. That's where the whole cryptocurrency thing comes in. So cryptocurrency basically provides you with the the um, the method, or re it's a reward based system on transactions that you have verified. Now, obviously, again, going into details about it. Uh, if you would like, leave a comment below. Then I will I will maybe make a different video or separate video explaining it uh, digital uh, virtually or maybe more in a in a uh, diagram way of what the blockchain is um, and basically or more specifically what cryptocurrencies the maths behind the cryptocurrencies. So it's basically a uh, it, it basically cryptocurrency when you participate in a mining pool, which is another term. Uh, so basically a, a pool of a bunch of PC resources that gets thrown in and then you basically help verify transactions in this DLT. And this DLT or this mining pool then awards you based on your participation, based on the hash rate hash rate of your 
of your mining mining machine um, to then give you the, the 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 reward in cryptocurrency, which is then worth a certain amount, um, depending on what you mine. If you mine Bitcoin, Ethereum, um, uh, is that, uh, there's so many <laughs> different cryptocurrencies these days. Obviously, the most two popular ones is Ethereum and and Bitcoin. Um, but but to come back to to pull it back to what we were talking about about the 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 crypto uh, or the reward based system, uh, it's similar to what people are now doing, uh, helping the different sides in this uh, ongoing conflict to essentially uh, to essentially um, provide you with a reward based system if you were to to say for instance um a system by lending them your pc resources to to denial of service or to take down these specific web web 2 applications or these web 2 apps and um, again very dangerous i don't advise it because as a person you don't necessarily have any control over what happens to your pc if you install these software and something similar to to um mining mining software uh, if you want to get into the whole mining space, I do suggest you do additional research um, outside of this podcast because uh, it is very complex and it is very much the new frontier. So obviously there is a lot of bad people out there um, wanting to misuse the misuse the lack of information uh, the individuals have and obviously utilize it in a dangerous fashion. So yeah, um, that's it for me. I hope I explained um, web one, two, and three in a in a way that you can understand. Bit of a shorter episode this uh, this um, podcast, but uh, please uh, leave a like, subscribe, and comment below if you want to hear more about the blockchain and the maths behind it. Thank you, and have a fantastic day. Goodbye.